All right, Leslie, I think you're good to go. Thank you, Esther. Uh, happy Monday again, everyone. Um, hope everybody has had a chance to get outside and uh, soak up a few rays of sunshine. It's gorgeous outside and looks like you're going to have a pretty nice week. Um, in spite of our rough start to the week from an evergreen perspective, hopefully the sun will at least help keep our spirits up. Um, before I jump over to the question and answer, uh, which as usual, please find the Q&A icon on your Zoom window and feel free to start typing your questions into the Q&A. I should have plenty of time to get to questions today, but I do have a few general updates that I did want to share with everybody before I, before I switch over to that. The first update that I wanted to make everybody aware of is uh, next week's meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28th at 8 a.m. And that is due to the state of Maine office closures in observance of Memorial Day. Um, so just make sure that that meeting invite is showing up on your calendar for Tuesday morning. It should be, but just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Also um, wanted to just thank everybody again for your patience as our vendor continues to research the cause of today's evergreen outages. Uh, the system does seem to be online now and has been available um, for several hours, but I know we had the outage this morning and then a couple of other uh, very brief outages um, mid-morning and around the lunch hour. So um, they are still trying to determine what is what caused those outages. So you may see uh, periodic brief outages until they're able to diagnose that and fully remediate whatever is causing the issue. So again, uh, really appreciate your patience as we work through that. Um, on a positive note, as it relates to Evergreen, I, I am pleased to announce that we did um, resolve 11 of the um, issues that uh, all of our end users had been facing with Friday's deploy. So there was a production deploy on Friday evening. And um, I know last week I had updated you on the list of items that we were testing. Some of those items did not pass testing and will require some additional fixes by the vendor before we can push those to production. But we were able to resolve 11 of the issues that have been um, creating some inefficiencies and problems for you all. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go over those, but I will also include the full list in the weekly communication that I'll send out this week. Um, so the ones that did deploy on Friday night were the item related to the behavior management attachments that were copying forward when you were revising a plan for submission um, for committee review and approval. Um, those will no longer copy forward so that the user can upload the new attachments uh, when requesting an additional approval or an extension of an approval. Um, also for reportable event providers, they weren't seeing the active person record assignments on the person summary. They should now be able to see that, see those. Um, for community case managers, BI care coordinators that were on the person-centered plan custom list page and attempting to select a row that was inactive and then you were losing your little three dot ellipses option that should be resolved and you should no longer lose that ellipses if you select an inactive row. Also related to the person-centered plan, the key milestones should now be copying forward when revising an annual plan. And the community case manager brain injury care coordinator roles should now be able to complete change type PCPs with a change reason of 90 day review. I know some people were struggling to get those um, set to complete because of the medical professional options under the medical review date section, never displaying the options from the person record. That issue has been resolved. So if that issue was what was pre preventing you from completing that change type uh, with a change reason on 90 day review, that should be resolved now. 
reportable events with a category of restraint. Uh, the restraint time duration was not calculating correctly, but should be now as of Friday's deploy. There was a field in the EIS PCP related to the annual medical appointments that was a text field that had a label of if other. That content did not migrate when we deployed on February 20th, but that data has now been fixed in Evergreen and should appear in the corresponding Evergreen appointments in the note field. The brain injury person record, uh, some brain injury person records that had an enrollment status of BI active in EIS had DD eligibility forms created an error during our deploy in February 20th. Um, those have been cleaned up. So those should now no longer be displaying on those brain injury person records. And there was an uh, error that was occurring in the emergency room disposition form, the ER disposition form that was preventing crisis caseworkers from being able to complete those forms. That error that was saying value cannot be null parameter input has, has been resolved. And I believe, I didn't confirm for myself, but I believe that person guardianship conservatorship status should now be properly displaying in the green ribbon on the person record banner. Um, and the last item that um, I will be reporting out in the weekly communication that was resolved is there was a, an issue with APS reports not being able to be reassigned back to the to a caseworker from the originating district that has been resolved as well. So again, some uh, forward progress, which is great news. Um, my team will begin testing on another group of issues tomorrow. Um, those issues will be tested between tomorrow and um, Friday, May 31st. And any of those issues that pass testing will go into the production system on Friday evening, May 31st. Um, I am I have the list from our vendor of what's going to be available for retesting, but I haven't had a chance to really uh, look through it in, in good detail to be able to articulate to you what what those items are. So I'll plan to do a review of those items at our meeting on the 28th. A few other items that I did want to um, share with you. The reportable event, we've created a reportable event paper form for, again, those users who are unable to submit a reportable event directly within the system. I will be uploading that paper form into the Evergreen Help Center, but I will also be sending it out um, via the weekly communication as well. And um, our my team will be able to also uh, respond to emails that come into the evergreen.dhhs email box related to um, reportable events using that paper form. There is all, we've also heard from a number of case managers, guardianship representatives, care coordinators, that there are duplicate or maybe a better way to describe them are unnecessary or old um, person record phone numbers, addresses, and contacts. Um, so we want to help you get that section cleaned up and make it a bit more usable and user friendly. Uh, but because you don't have the ability to delete those records yourself, we have decided that we will um, come up with a sort of a, a recurring way to, to keep that data cleaned up, to get that an ongoing way to get that data cleaned up over the course of the remainder of this calendar year. So from now until December 31st, 2024, um, if you see, if you're a user that has the ability to edit person record phone numbers, addresses, and contacts, and you see a record that you feel is unnecessary and should be removed from the person record, you can update the note field in that specific person phone number, person address or person contact record to indicate the word delete. 
we will, my team will create a query of the system that will tell us um, on an ongoing basis what records have this delete terminology in the note field. And then we will go in and manually clean those up um, ongoing between now and the end of the year. So I will also um, include that information in the weekly communication as well, but please feel free to share that with your coworkers, subordinates, um, so that they are aware that they can be doing that and we will start cleaning that up on an ongoing basis. And then um, the last kind of general update that I wanted to give everybody is, um, it, it came to my attention that there was some confusion related to um, service implementation plans uh, attached to annual PCPs. So when the community case manager or the BI care coordinator revises a, a PCP for annual planning, the service implementation plans will be cleared out. And after the planning team meeting and uh, once the case manager or care coordinator has had the ability to link up all of the new services being requested to the goals with appropriate needs, risks, um, uh, benefits, that kind of thing, uh, strengths, strengths and um, weaknesses and that kind of thing, um, then they will be able to invite the providers to submit a new service implementation plan that corresponds with the, the services being requested in that annual plan. So they will, service implementation plans will be cleared out and will be requested again at the annual PCP, at the time of annual person-centered planning. Um, I do see there's uh, one question that's queued up over here in the q and I do have a few questions um, that, uh, came out of a, one of the one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, that um, Nancy and Udea had run out of time for um, with GMS. So I, I'm going to just go over those because I think it's helpful for um, if, if this is a question from one of our community case management agencies, it may be a question from all of our community case management agencies or at least multiple. Um, so I just wanted to address those questions quickly and then that way also if anybody's on from GMS, uh, they can hear these uh, questions as well and the answers to them. So uh, most of these are around the history section of the person record. Uh, one of them was how can history items be archived um, for, for outdated information? And the answer to that is that history records are not intended to be archived. They are intended to remain on the person's record for historical purposes. So we did not give the ability to archive those or remove those. Um, they, they are, again, intended truly to be history captured over time and remain as part of the person's record um, ongoing. And then there were a couple of different questions related to um, how those history records should be added. One of them was um, indicating that there were, uh, or, or sort of asking for some clarification around the history categories and subcategories. So for example, if you had an item that you wanted to add under communication and advocacy, um, you should probably uh, separate um, any items that are uh, specific to um, each of the subcategories. So within um, communication, and let me just, I'll pull it up here really quickly for myself so that I can, within communication and advocacy, there are subtypes of communication and a separate subtype of advocacy and a separate subtype of civic engagement. So if you have history items that you want to add under that category, you should separate, it's recommended that you should separate any history items related to communication under that subtype, and then anything related to advocacy under its own separate entry using the advocacy subtype. Um, and then there's also a similar comment or uh, question from that group about um, the category for um, 
uh, social, social history. Um, so there is a category of social and relationships, and there are uh, four subtypes, one for individual and family life, one for personal relationships, one for leisure and recreation, and one for faith cultural community. So again, it's recommended that if you um, have any um, history related to any of those subtypes, you should separate those out into their appropriate subtype. The last item was um, an indication that the uh, ability to upload a picture to the person record didn't seem to be working per the instructions in the user guide. So I will take that back and have my team test that and either track an issue if it if it's truly not working or update the instructions if those are incorrect and need to be updated. And then um, we'll make sure that the information gets shared back to let you know whether um, the instructions have been updated or we're tracking an issue for that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the questions and answers. Uh, so the first question is, we have an LTSPA that has been working and it's good through 2025 but now we are getting a member does not have a coverage code required on benefit denial. Is there a reason why this would stop working? Also, we have a few consumers who are still missing migrated service implementation plans from EIS and locations that are listed in, as inactive in Evergreen. Is the CCM allowed to reactivate these locations or do I need to reach out to Evergreen email. So as it relates to the LTS PA and that error message, um, Chris, can you please send an email to evergreen.dhhs at main.gov with the LTS PA number and um, some additional information about uh, where you're seeing that message? Is it in the PCP? Uh, on the PCP side, or are you seeing it in the PA side? And I'm trying to determine if it's a warning or an actual error. Um, and then as it relates to, and we'll do some additional research on that. Oh, Emily, did you want to chime in? I see you're trying to type an answer to that. And you have I was just going to say, Leslie, that typically relates to um, reclassification if they're, if it's late. Um, so I'd recommend asking the case manager about the reclassification status, um, Chris, or you could also email resource coordinator odes at main.gov if you don't get a response and I can look into that. That should be happening less and less in the future because um, many folks know we're aligning um, reclassification with the plan effective date. So it wouldn't, um, unless there's changes in financial eligibility, um, again, in the future when the reclassification is done, um, at the time of the um, you know, annual planning process in, in time for the PCP effective date, then you wouldn't have this issue um, where you know, mid plan year, there's a uh, issue with coverage with that classification. Thank you, Emily. Emily, could you just drop that email address as an answer to that question in the Q&A list? Yes. Thanks. And we have another question or comment from Kendra Harriman. Uh, Kendra, can you type your uh, question into the Q&A unless it's specifically related to this LTSPA item? Um, I can just I can just email Nancy after. I just need to speak with her directly off of this. OK. OK. Thanks, Kendra. Um, so to your other question, Chris, about uh, missing migrated service implementation plans, um, uh, all, uh, that would be another item that could you please uh, send an email to evergreen.dhhs at main.gov with the specific person uh, uh, record ID, person ID, um, and person-centered plan that's missing service, migrated service implementation plans, um, the PCP form ID. And then uh, 
which um, service implementation plans you were expecting to be migrated that are not on there. That will take uh, some research um, uh, by my team. And similarly, uh, any locations that are listed as inactive in Evergreen, uh, if you could also email that same evergreen.dhhs at main.gov um, with the location NPI plus three that uh, you believe should be active in Evergreen. And we'll do some research on those for you. Um, and then uh, the CCM cannot reactivate those locations. We, we need to do that for you. My team needs to do that for you. Um, Lisa is wondering if there's a time frame for when PCPs that are not showing up as active yes will be resolved. Um, I do not have a time frame on that yet, Lisa. Um, the vendor replied back indicating that that was working as uh, expected in our requirements. So I need to do some additional research on that and may need to request a change, uh, an enhancement, a change to the system if, um, if I agree with their assessment of that. So I apologize, but I do not have an estimate for that yet. Leslie, can I speak to that real quick? Yeah. Because there are different situations, different scenarios when it comes to active equals yes. Yeah. There are um, ones that kind of migrated over that the, um, and there are some people's records that have no active equals yes. And there, we have to go through each one of those files and make sure there are plans in there that have an effective date that encompasses today's date. And if there isn't one of those plans in there, then we the guidance for them is they need to start a plus new form because there's nothing that will ever become active. Okay. And then there is the ones that kind of migrated that are were started in the EIS and then brought into Evergreen. And we they didn't become active when they should have. And we can take a look at those individually and go with those individuals and tell them whether they should start a new one or benefit from waiting until maybe there's a fix because it depends on how much work they did prior to versus um, how you know how it carried over. If there was a lot of work done and mm -hmm. what's left to do with it, if it's a lot less work to wait versus do a plus add new form, then that's what we give them for guidance, wait or add a new form. And then there's the third scenario, which is these new plans are doing that they created in Evergreen and they put an effective date of, let's just say yesterday, and it's not showing active equals yes. Those ones, Uday and I can meet with people and we can help them through that process. There is a way, we have a workaround that we've been working on, but it's not something they can do on their own and it's not something we can do on our own. We have to work together to make that happen. So what is this third scenario? Uh, maybe we should talk about this offline. Yeah, maybe. yeah, we will. I do want to talk to you offline, but it, it I talked to Dara earlier today and she said that there's some that there's something going on with there's a ticket for something about it, it looking at I don't even know, I can't speak to it because Uday can. So I don't want okay. to go in, but we'll talk about it offline. But if it's one that was created in E in Evergreen. Yeah. And they created it with an effective date in the future, but it's gone past that date and it has not triggered as active equals yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm losing my voice again here and there. Um, <laughs> then we can help them with that. And people have been sending emails with person ID, form ID, and we've done a quick meeting with them and been able to, to help them with that. Okay. While so we're waiting for FEI. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to summarize for anybody that is still struggling with the active equals yes, it sounds like there's a few different scenarios. One is if all of your person's person-centered plans are active equals no, and you don't have a PCP in there that has an effective date range that falls within the current date, then you should start an initial plan. If you have an in progress, a, a PCP that migrated in progress and it's not showing as active yes and you need to be able to complete that, 
or you have a PCP that you created in Evergreen and the uh, effective date is in the past. And so it should be showing as active yes. In both of those scenarios, please email us at evergreen.dhhs at main.gov. Let us know the person ID, the PCP form ID, and which scenario you're facing. And then um, Nancy and Udea and the team can do some research and either do a quick call with you to help you work around that or respond to you with the recommendation on whether you should um, start a new initial or try to wait for a resolution to the outstanding issue. Um, thanks, Nancy. Lisa is saying she just tried adding delete to one of the clients in the note field. There was already a note that said from Mapsys. When I tried to add delete to that field, it showed some error occurred. Oh no. All right, we'll definitely take a look at that, Lisa. Can you uh, send an email to evergreen.dhhs.main.gov with the person ID um, and which um, record you were trying to add that note to so we can follow up on that? Thank you so much. Um, Jenna is saying, I have a question. A few of GT's support brokers are having issues accessing service implementation plans to complete. They are receiving a red circle and do not have the toggle option to select the service implementation plan specifically. I apologize if this issue has already been discussed. Uh, no, it has not, Jenna. GT did have a meeting with Evergreen that one of my uh, support brokers joined and they believed the issue was corrected, but I had our employees check and unfortunately it's not corrected yet. I'm wondering if there's something I can change within their permissions. Yeah, it sounds like it must be a permissions issue, Jenna. So if you could uh, send an email to evergreen.dhhs at main.gov with the specific usernames, that's typically their first name, dot their last name, but the specific usernames of the individuals that are not seeing the edit toggle on the service implementation plan form and just explain that, that these users should have the PCP data entry role in order to um, edit service implementation plans. And it seems like maybe their access is not correct. And then my team can take a look at it and try to get their access corrected. All right, are there other questions uh, for today? I don't see any more in the Q&A right now. I did track a few items or at least a couple of items that we'll be uh, on the lookout for in our evergreen.dhhs at main.gov email address. And I can also put that in here in case. Um, in case anybody needs that in order to send it a follow-up email, but we'll keep our eye out for those emails um, and we'll try to help you through those. And we'll definitely uh, take a look into the um, issue with adding delete to that note field. We definitely want you guys to be able to do that as a way to um, help you get those cleaned up. Uh, Carol, I see that your hand is up. Is there a question that I can answer for you? Oh, maybe not. All right, well, I don't see any additional questions in the Q&A. I certainly wanna be respectful of everyone's time today. Uh, so we can certainly adjourn here. Um, everybody have a fantastic week. Keep your eye out for the weekly communication. And I will also follow up with a notification once um, our vendor has completely stabilized the system, just to let you know that you should not be worried about any um, brief outages anymore. So as soon as I get that word from them, I will let you know that. 
And also, since I won't talk to you until Tuesday, everybody have a fantastic long Memorial Day weekend. And I hope you enjoy the weather this week.